So I got this candle for Christmas, and they said that I'd really like the scent, but I don't know. I just, I don't really smell anything. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Sounds Good Makes Sense, a discussion show for the World of Warcraft player. My name is Devilor, and today I want to talk about AI. Now, I'm not talking about like when you're tanking a mob and they all decide to run behind you for some inexplicable reason. No, today I want to talk about the ongoing emergence of the new technologies behind artificial intelligence and how they're being used in the gaming industry. We're going to talk about some of the risks and the benefits both to World of Warcraft and the gaming industry as a whole. And there's two cases in particular that I want to talk about directly related to World of Warcraft. So for starters, just to kind of set the stage a little bit, um, if you haven't been following the ethical discourses surrounding AI, that's totally fine. We're not going to go into too much detail here, but the TLDR of it is that it mostly revolves around the use of what's called generative AI. That's essentially a situation in which you ask a computer program to create something, and then it uses machine learning to come up with what it thinks that is based off of comparing that to a lot of other things that match that similar description in the past. In other words, if you ask it to paint you a picture of a cat, for example, it will look at all the pictures of cats that it's ever seen. It will look at all the paintings that it's ever seen and try to figure out what the merging of those two would be and just come up with something. And recent advances in AI technology have gotten that to the point where most of the time it can produce something that's actually relatively close to something that a human being might have produced, which is where the ethical concerns start to come into play. A lot of companies, especially, are starting to look to AI as a way of, quote unquote, cost cutting, a.k.a. don't hire people. After all, if you can get a computer program to produce the same artwork, the same voice acting, etc., that a human being who costs X amount of dollars per year could produce, why would you ever pay somebody to do that? And most of the current uses that we've seen are related to voice acting and art in some capacity, but the technology has been advancing rapidly to the point where there's a lot of concerns about what does this mean for the future of anything creative in the industry. So to approach this topic and sort of start off the discussion, I want to look at a couple of examples of ways that AI is being used within the bounds of World of Warcraft. And one of the first examples that might come to mind for a lot of people is actually an add-on called VoiceOver. This is a third party, essentially a fan project, that has used AI to basically give voice acting to all of the NPCs in WoW Classic. So basically what they did was they took all of the quest and gossip text in the game. So basically anytime you click on an NPC and a little window pops up with some text on it, that they took all of that text and they gave it to an AI and asked it to create voiceovers for all of that text. And just to be clear, that is actually a lot of work that had to go into this because not only did they need to collect all of that information and put it all into the AI, but it's not just a simple copy and paste job. They also need to actually go through each of the lines and make sure they all sound right, make sure all of the different voices that it's coming up with match with the other voices that it's using for that NPC and so on. There is actually a lot of work that went into this add-on. Now, me personally, I don't use this add-on, um, but that has more to do with the way that I approach World of Warcraft myself. I find it to be very distracting. And I'll be honest, yes, a lot of this is just because I am an impatient person when it comes to questing. If I run up to an NPC and I click on them and accept a quest, I am halfway to the objective of that quest by the time the voiceover add-on would have finished spitting out the first line. But it's also, for me, largely because of the current limitations to AI technology, a bit of an uncanny valley. It's, I don't really feel immersed in what they're saying because it sounds so strange to me. It's like when you're playing a Bethesda game and the NPC just sort of turns to the camera and, oh, good, you're finally here. It's just like I say, that kind of uncanny valley where it's close, but not close enough that I can sort of break that uh, suspension of disbelief and, and get into it. Now, again, that's largely just a limitation of current AI technology, and I don't think this will always be the case. And I mention that because a lot of the discussion around generative AI tends to focus, I think, a little bit too much on how it sounds weird or how they have too many fingers or whatever. And that's all stuff that at some point will be fixed. But yeah, for me, currently... I don't use the add-on just because it's a bit off to me and it, it doesn't really play into my immersion of the game very well. I should also mention just for transparency, uh, voice acting is a field that I'm actually starting to get into a little bit. In fact, my first uh, paid performance is coming out sometime next month. But I only mention that just so that you know, like if I have a bias, my bias is going to be in favor of voice actors. But all of that said, I don't really have a problem with this add-on. 
but that's because of a very important technicality. When you're thinking about ethical concerns like this, I find it very important to look holistically at what the total effect of something is. And at the end of the day, when you sum everything up, this is a fan project, and there are thousands of voice lines in here. There is no way that they were ever going to be able to hire voice actors for all of that. And importantly, they're also not asking for payment for this in any way. Like they have a donation link, but that's about it. So there really aren't any profits for them to have paid voice actors from. Also, Blizzard themselves would probably never hire anybody to perform all of these lines. Like the possibility of Blizzard going back and saying, yeah, let's do voice acting for all of our classic quests is pretty close to zero. And even if it wasn't, the fact that this add-on exists would probably not change whether or not they decided to do it. I doubt that would be a factor whatsoever in their decision to actually go and hire voice actors to perform these uh, classic voice lines. So ultimately, in this case, no one is being replaced because this job never existed in the first place. And that, to me, is a very, very important distinction. This isn't them saying, well, we don't want to hire voice actors because AI is cheaper. This is them saying this project literally would not exist if it wasn't for the fact that we could get AI to do it. Now, that does mean that if Blizzard were to look at this add-on and go, oh, hey, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll start using AI for voiceover instead. That would be very bad. Unlike this fan project, Blizzard actually intends to make a profit off of the video game, and therefore they should be paying voice actors to perform the lines that are needed for the video game that they're creating. And regardless of any regulations or legalities or whatever else you want to throw at it, if Blizzard were to look and say, all right, we're going to use AI instead of voice actors just because it's cheaper and that way we don't have to pay people, that I find highly unethical. Which, another important side note I'll throw in here, please don't mix up legality and ethics. They're two different things. Just because something is legal, that doesn't mean that it should be or that it's the right thing to do. And a lot of the discussion around generative AI and the ethics surrounding it so far has included people saying things along the lines of, well, if they haven't done anything illegal, then they haven't done anything wrong. And that is just not a statement that I consider to necessarily be true. And I don't think that whether or not the AI can do the job effectively is a really good factor for this either. Again, a lot of the discussion surrounding all of the generative AI stuff has been, well, it's just not as good as having a human do it. And while yes, that's correct right now, as in like, Voice acting done by a human voice actor, a professional voice actor, will almost always give you a better result than AI. Uh, art created by a professional artist will almost always give you a better result than an AI. While that's correct right now, that may not always be the case. As far as what happens once that is the case and how to regulate that and make sure that it's not just used as yet another way to put people out of work, that's a much bigger topic than this episode can really cover. Uh, and so I'm not going to get into it right now. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear that just because it's not as good as what something a human can produce, uh, that doesn't mean that that will always be the case. I think we need to be prepared for a future in which a company like Blizzard could just have an AI produce all of this stuff and it would be indistinguishable from something that a human has produced. And that's just something to keep in mind as we continue to explore this topic. But I do want to talk about one way that Blizzard has confirmed that they are using AI that I think is great. And I'm honestly surprised that we haven't seen much discussion about. So quick story time for a second. While I was at BlizzCon a couple months ago, I spent a lot of time hanging out with Spencer Downey from the Starting Zone podcast. And he had mentioned that they had had an interview with Morgan Day uh, in which Morgan had mentioned that they were using AI in some capacity to help fit armor models to different character models. So when I was setting things up to make this episode, I asked him, hey, do you mind if I reference that? Uh, and he just gave me the audio for it. Are there any particular tools that your teams are working with right now that were neat and new and you haven't played with before? It's a great for question. Encounters? I'm not sure I'm supposed to talk about this, but I'm gonna. So I'm sure you all are all familiar with just like, you know, we have so many unique silhouettes and like rigs and all of our characters look different where a lot of other games, it's like there's one rig, all your you know, player classes essentially use the same rig. But that makes fitting armor really hard because that means you have to do them all that many times. Um, so the team's been exploring like machine learning options to make that much, much uh, better and quicker so that our, our team can spend time making really cool things instead of making sure you know, not elf ears aren't poking through helmets. So that's been a really fun like, thing to see kind of come online. So first off, thank you so much to the Starting Zone for letting me use that. Uh, definitely recommend you check them out. I'll put a link down in the description below. But I love this use of AI because it's not replacing anyone. It's just making their lives simpler. So a bit of background context. 
every time a new armor set is made, it has to then be fit to every single character model. So like the helmet, for example, they need to make a version that's stretched properly to fit on a human and then a version that's stretched to fit on an orc and then a version that fits on a gnome and a version that fits on a tauren and so on and so forth. And that's historically been a very manual process. I assume there's some level of automation to it. Like I assume they, they do actually have something that starts the process, but they then still would have to go into and make sure it all lines up and do little corrections here and there constantly. And I think this is also part of why allied races tend to use the same like animations and rigging as other pre-existing races. Example, if a, uh, uh, if a Volpera is basically just a goblin, then that's a lot less work that has to be done on every single armor piece in the game. So if they can use machine learning, which is another word for AI, if they can use machine learning to figure out a way that it can just look at the character model itself and figure out and find all those little inconsistencies and clean all that up for them, then at the very least, that reduces the workload on the artist tremendously. And importantly, using an AI to do this isn't replacing anyone. Like they're not just popping open an AI image generator and saying, hey, make me a new tier set for druids, which, by the way, I was curious. So I tried that and. Um... But no, the artists and the artist team are still making the concepts. They're still creating the models. They're still building the textures. They're still fitting everything together. They're still doing all of the creative work. This is just getting rid of the menial tasks afterwards that make it fit onto the different models. This is, to me at least, a great example of a way that AI and machine learning can support artists without replacing them. And hey, maybe in the future, this could even allow for better and more diverse character customizations. If you don't need every human head to be roughly the same shape, right? If you don't need every orc shoulders to be roughly the same massive size, then maybe there's some future in which this could mean even more diversity within World of Warcraft, as long as all of those concepts are still supplied by artists. And I could even see versions of this concept that work for voiceover as well. Like, imagine, imagine if instead of being called champion all the time, the game actually said your character's name. Like, if you're escaping from a cave-in and Bran or whoever is shouting out, Watch out, champion. What if they said instead, watch out, devil, or they're coming for you or something like that? Could even extend to like raid and party members. Maybe there could be a case where uh, as part of a raid encounter, maybe they're calling out specific characters by name as part of that. This sort of thing could really allow for your character to feel like much more directly involved in the story instead of just being a, a bystander or hired muscle taking care of all the problems while the real characters solve everything. Again, all of this needs very, very careful regulation, and the tech isn't quite there yet, but it could be a really, really cool future as long as it's done in a way that doesn't slight voice actors. It'll take a lot of very, very careful legislation, regulations, uh, union negotiations, and so on to get there. I'm hopeful that we can eventually reach a future where these things are beneficial, not only to the companies creating things, but also to the voice actors that are contributing things or the artists that are contributing things and so on. Uh, I'm hopeful that we can get to that point. It's going to take a lot of work and hopefully we don't end up with it just meaning a lot of people lose their jobs. Because at the end of the day, that's really the big risk here is that companies just see this stuff as a way to not have to pay people to do things and instead have a way to just have a computer program generate all of that themselves. Uh, which saves them a lot of money, and thus there's not really much incentive for them to not do that. But again, that topic is much bigger than this video, so we're going to wrap up for today. I do want to answer a couple of questions that came in. Uh, this first one came from Jason Blue 3496 who asked, How goes Project Deck? Also, do you think Season of Discovery is a prelude to additional specs for Retail WoW? So Project Deck is something I actually thought a lot of people forgot about. Um, it's a... Uh, a card game that I've been working off and on on for the last like 10, 11 years at this point, quite a while. It's gone through a lot of different iterations. It's still not in any shape where I'd be able to really show anything off just yet. In fact, uh, just a couple years ago, I kind of did a complete overhaul of it and threw out everything I'd already done and started again. Um, at some point, I'm hoping to find time to work on that properly, but that is that is on my massive list of projects that I hope to get to eventually. As far as how Season of Discovery relates to Retail WoW, um, I don't think there's necessarily going to be a direct connection. Like, I don't think Blizzard, for example, is trying tanking Warlocks in Season of Discovery 
in the hopes that, oh man, we're going to look and see how this works. And then maybe we'll put that into modern WoW. I don't think it's necessarily that direct. Um, but I do know that the WoW team tends to take inspirations from lots of things. And why not take inspirations from Season of Discovery as well? Like, it's not so far out of the question that they would look at Warlock tanks in SOD or Rogue tanks or Mage healers or what have you and say, hey, actually, that's a pretty cool idea. Let's find a way to bring that forward into retail. It's completely possible. I just don't necessarily think that the fact something exists in SOD is really much of an indicator that it's going to exist in the future in retail. The second question from Ian Stoll said, if given the opportunity, would you ever entertain working at Blizzard again? You always did such a great job with creators and the videos with you and Ian. So first of all, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I have always had a blast doing those videos. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, I think the important thing that I want to say here in response to this question is just to reiterate, like, there was never any bad blood between me and Blizzard whatsoever. Like, I, I didn't leave Blizzard because I was, like, angry and had to get out of the company or anything like that. No, it's unfortunately a pretty boring story. I got a really good job offer elsewhere and felt like I had to take it. So yeah, if there was a fit for me at Blizzard again, I would absolutely consider it. That's There's no question about that. Anyway, thank you all so much once again for watching. That'll wrap it up for this week. Um, keep in mind, you can find me on pretty much all social media. I'm pretty much everywhere as Devilor. Uh, and keep an eye out for a video coming out. I'm aiming for Monday as well, that I will have a video coming out that talks about the future of this channel, uh, as well as more ways that you could support this channel and what I'm trying to do here going forward and some new content that'll be coming along the way. And check out the starting zone. They're great. Links in the description below. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you later.